In this video we're going to throw all cars into the wind. We're going to paint with TS paints on Lexan. So we're going to use a Tamiya plastic paint to paint Lexan. And I'm going to show you how you can do that using a PS55 flat clear. You can expand your color palette with 100 colors. Thanks for watching. In one of my last videos I have built and also unboxed this uh, Axial RBX10 Rift Kit. This was a lot of fun to assemble. You're able to tell right now with it being all assembled that this is a rock bouncer. You'll also be able to tell that it still lacks uh, all of the body panels. This thing has the smallest body panels that I have ever encountered. Um, I also did not have any of the electronics in at the time, but uh, we will go over those I think in a future video just because otherwise this video will become too long. A link to the Axial RBX10 Rift Kit can be found in the video description box and I will make sure that I uh, link the unboxing video over here in the right top of your screen so you can check that out as well. Anyway, this thing has the smallest body panels that I've ever seen come on uh, any type of a truck, buggy, whatever. The bomber had some really small body panels. The bom bomber had like a, a hood panel, a roof and two sides. But this one, it's even smaller. The biggest body panel is uh, the interior. Now, I don't think it's super interesting for me to go deep dive into the interior. I really want to... Uh, sort of focus on what you can do with those small body panels in this uh, video. So what I've done is uh, I've already cut all my masking. This was uh, really not a complicated process. Uh, so you can see on the front panel over here, so this will sit right on the hood. It says Rift. I oversized some of those uh, Rift logos for the sides, so you can uh, see that over here. Now this of course, this is mirrored, so uh, you can read it well like this. And then um, it reads well <laughs> like this. So you'll be able to see it like this. And it reads well like this. Now how I do that, I grab a logo off the internet, I size it uh, according to how I want to have it. I do that uh, in Photoshop in my case. Then I horizontally flip it. Then I print it and then I stick this to the outside of my Lexan. What happens when you stick this to the outside of your Lexan is that uh, on the inside you'll be able to see it really well once you turn a lamp on. Let me just show that like this. So once you put your masking tape on, it's really easy to see all those lines and cut them and hit everything and make sure that everything is cut before you start painting. So that's also what I did over here. Now I wanted to sort of over blow up, so over dimension some of those uh, logos for the side, seeing that these body panels are mega small. I figured that it would perhaps be cool to have a logo that's like oversized so that kind of stretches over the uh, the edges of the panel so that's what we accomplished over here once you're um, when you are still cutting it let's see if i can find the other side uh, it looks like this so on the inside again you'll be able to see it fairly easily now um what i want to do first and that's also why i already peeled it is that outline of that uh, rift script i want to paint that black that's also going to be my first color this is going to be a really easy yet i hope pretty trick uh, paint scheme so what i want to do I put that black on then i'm going to peel the letters i want those to really pop so most likely they're going to be yellow, green, something like that. And after that, we're going to do uh, the background. And the background in this case is going to be the most interesting because I want the background to appear in a gray tone. And this is not a color that uh, Tamiya sells. At least they don't in PS paint. So I use a TS paint, which you're really not supposed to do. But a way to do that is to etch uh, the inside of your Lexan, so the side that you usually also paint, 
with some uh, flat clear and after that you can spray a uh, TS on it. Now seeing that these body panels do clean up after yourself but seeing that these body panels are so small means that uh, they won't flex a whole lot and you don't risk any uh, stress fractures in your paint. Uh, as always, paint really thin, but I guess we will just uh, go ahead and paint that way you can see how this will uh, turn out. This is a TS81 and I believe that it is actually fairly close to the color of that uh, cage, which I really like. So let's just go ahead and start painting, put that PS5 black on first on the outline of that letter and then uh, I will see you back over here on my lamp. Well, just like that, we're completely done again. And um, this was really super easy to paint. The hardest part of this paint scheme is cutting out the contours of those uh, letters. Once you have that done, once you have filled that in with the black, it is really straightforward. So, like I said, I uh, peeled the outline of those letters. I filled that in with a PS5 black. So with a Lexan specific paint. 
After that, I peeled all the letters. Now the letters, they make up a pretty big part of uh, the paint scheme in this case, just because these body panels, they're not that big. So I did want those to, well, to really pop actually. So I managed to do that by putting a bit of a special effect on them as well. And for that reason, I used this uh, lace. This lace, perhaps you're a long time viewer, this lace is also something that I've used on my uh, Yeti XXL. So with uh, the double car, like you see over there, I'll make sure that you see a close-up of it. Uh, this is a really cool trick. This is basically, this comes from the hot rotting world. If you want to replicate snake skin or anything, uh, you can find this in any type of hobby store, any type of a fabric store. Just have a good look and see what you can do uh, and if it would work uh, as masking. In this case, this works pretty fantastic. Uh, you can really flatten this out on the inside of a body panel because that's, uh, that's also what I did here. Um, if you want it to even flatter, so even closer to the legs and you get, of course, a better effect. Uh, for that reason, I use some regular tape just to stick this down to the still masked areas of the, of the body panels. I hope that makes uh, sense. So you really want it to sit close what you then do, uh, what I did in this case, is I used a metallic green. So you use one of the colors that you want uh, for, that, uh, for that effect, because you need to have two different colors, uh, of course, in order for it to pop. So I started out with a green metallic. After that, I took this uh, lace off. An important thing to note when you spray that green metallic is don't go uh, over and over and over. You just use one short, quick burst in which you have one linear motion over that lace, then you immediately peel it off and then you start backing it with your second color. Uh, in my case, my second color is a fluorescent yellow, which I then backed with white in order to make it pop. And then <laughs> I think that's uh, where we get to the most interesting part of this uh, paint scheme, which is that gray, because if you are, perhaps you are a paint addict like myself, um, this is not a color that you can use usually. Tamiya has a PS32 from the top of my head, which is a coarser gray, which is not this color. That's like definitely more light blue. This color is a TS81 and TS paint cannot be used on Lexan. So you need to keep that in mind. If you want to use a TS paint on Lexan, there's only one way to do it. And that is by etching the inside of your body first with a PS55 flat clear. Uh, I know there's a bit of confusion about this subject because I've had uh, people hitting me up saying like, hey, I used flat clear on the inside of the body and I took the film off and it's still shiny. That's exactly what it does. It does not uh, ruin the outside shine of your body, if that makes any sense. So if you use this just as like a, a base coat or just the etch for the TS paint to have something to hang on to, you won't notice that on the outside of the body. So you unmask whatever you want to, uh, to paint. In my case, it was the entire background. I unmasked that. I hit that with a coat of PS55 flat clear. I let that cure. That is pretty important. You don't have to spray this uh, thick at all. Uh, also, this uh, TS paint, you don't have to spray it thick. In this case, this is a TS81 Royal Light Gray, which is, I think, pretty close to the color of this... Uh, uh, Axial RBX10 Rift Kit Cage Color. That's a tongue twister. Uh, so then I use this uh, this TS81 um, two well fairly thin coats actually that I just let cure and then I peeled the, the overspray film off the outside and it turned out like this. Um, the interior as well. I used a couple different colors just because I hate seeing uh, fully blacked out interiors with like shiny people in there. So just put uh, some extra attention to, uh, to your interiors as well to make them look good. Gives you really something to look at uh, out on the trails. Um, well, again, I hope that this whole lace trick, that it makes sense. And I ho also hope that this TS on Alexan trick, that it makes any sense. If in the past I have given you any type of uh, painting advice that came in handy, please let me know in the comment section because it is really cool to hear back from you guys and girls. Also, if you have painted something or if you're in the process of painting something, uh, shoot me a message with the result. I always love seeing what you guys and girls are up to, uh, seeing how creative people get. For me, that, uh, that really makes this, making these videos uh, worthwhile. Um, 
Also, I gotta tell you this, if you, uh, perhaps you're seeing this at the right moment, you can win three 3D printers if you have not checked out my last video. Go have a look at that. I will make sure that it's linked over here as well. I'll also make sure that there's a link in the video description box to my mini factory where you can win one of three Snapmaker 2.0 three in one 3D printers. It's a 3D printer, but it's also a laser engraver. And it's also a CNC machine. Uh, entering is super simple. Somebody got really angry at me at my last video saying like, yeah, but you need to have a 3D printer and be like, really? No, you don't. If you have anything 3D printed on your trail truck, anything, you can have bought it, you can have inherited it. Somebody can have given it to you, you can have found it on the street. If it's 3D printed and you put it on your trail truck and you take a good picture of that trail truck, post it on my mini factory, you are already eligible to win a prize. You don't need to buy any files from my mini factory. It of course does help if you're subscribed to my channel. But that's basically it. Subscribing, by the way, it is free. Pressing the like button is also free and, uh, well, really helps my videos in the algorithm. And if you want to know anything more about what I showed you today, perhaps uh, uh, about the paints, perhaps about uh, this Axial Rift kit, check out all the links in the video description box. Also, in the next video, I will show you what electronics I put in this uh, Axial Rift and we will go also go look at some of the alternatives that you could use if you own one of these. Perhaps I will also put some different wheels and tires on it. But I guess we will find that out in the next video. In the video thereafter, I hope it has stopped raining by then so I can take this thing out in the mud. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.